So this section is all about implementing retrieval augmented generation with Chroma and Llama 2. So we'll start exploring what are word embeddings and then I'm going to introduce you to vector database which is Chroma and then we will take a look at semantic search and how to implement that using Chroma. And finally we'll bring all of that together and implement the RAG framework. So let's get started. Hello and uh, welcome back. So this is a very important video where I want to talk about uh, a word embeddings or text embeddings. So we have looked at some of the foundational aspects of LLM in the previous videos. If you remember, I touched upon the concept of tokens, vectors and embeddings. Now both tokens and embeddings are some kind of vectors. They are actually represented as vectors. But the fundamental difference between a token and an embedding is the context. So a token is a simple conversion of a number of words in a sentence into a set of tokens. So we have seen how to convert or how to encode text to tokens that the LLM can understand. And tokens are very, very specific to the LLM that we are using for uh, chat or uh, text completion. Whereas embeddings are also tokens, but they inherently save the meaning and the context of the sentence that we are dealing with. So we are going to use one of the popular uh, yet smaller uh, embedding model called the mini LM L6 V2. So what the embeddings model typically does is it accepts a sentence, encodes that and then puts that in a context where the meaning and the semantic context of the sentence is preserved. So when you generate embeddings for a set of sentences and some sentences have closer meaning or they represent the context much more closer than the other, they are uh, uh, kept in a much more cohesive form or, or in a uh, much more closer context in the graph, in the multidimensional graph. So this, this is going to help us in performing semantic search or similarity search. So uh, this is very, very important for retrieving the context and performing a search in a, a large database of embeddings, which is called as vector database. And I'm going to cover that in my next video. But at this point, let's focus on embedding. So I want to walk you through this notebook. Now, uh, we are going to import NumPy and Sentence Transformers. So before this, I strongly advise uh, you SSH into the Vulture GPU stack and run the requirements.txt file, which already contains the Sentence Transformers. Or you can also run the uh, pip install Sentence Transformers uh, just before you run this notebook. So uh, this is very uh, important. It's a prerequisite. So once we import the right module, let's go ahead and define the function responsible for taking a sentence or a phrase and uh, encoding that into an embedding. And we are using exactly the same one that we discussed earlier. So this is from Hugging Face, Sentence Transformers All Mini LM L6 V2. That's exactly the model that we are using. Uh, remember, embeddings is all about a model. So you pass the text through a model and the model will come back with a vector that has the context and the semantic meaning of the entire phrase that you have passed through the model. So we define this function and then we are going to create embeddings for a couple of phrases. So let's first generate the embedding for a phrase, which is apple is a fruit. Now, similarly, I'm going to generate the embedding for another phrase, which also has an apple but the context is very different. This time we are talking about iPhone. Now, we have converted both the phrases into embeddings. So let's look at the length of these embeddings. So when you look at the number of elements, there are 384. Now, when we look at the length of the second embedding, that's also 384. 
Now, the important point to understand here is, irrespective of the length of the sentence, the model always comes back with the same length. While preserving the semantic context and the meaning of the phrase that we have sent. So, even if the length of the original sentence or the phrase is different, the output from the embedding, embeddings model is going to be the same. All right, so with that in place, let's generate embeddings for a couple of more phrases. So this time we are generating a, uh, an embedding for the phrase mango is a fruit. And similarly, I'm going to generate an uh, embedding for another phrase that actually says there is a new Apple iPhone. Now, our goal is to find the distance between one vector and the other. The closer the vectors in this multidimensional graph, the meaning is the same, or at least they are slightly related. Now, if the distance is really uh, long, or, or the gap is wide between one embedding and the other, that means they share very, uh, they, they, they almost share nothing in common. So in order to perform uh, that distance-based uh, calculation to figure out how close or how far two embeddings are in a multidimensional space, we do what is called as the dot product. So a dot product is a pretty well-defined mechanism to find how close or how similar two vectors are. Now this function doesn't know anything about embeddings. It simply accepts two vectors, performs a dot product. If the dot product value is one, that means they are identical and we are looking at exactly the same phrase. The closer the value to the uh, uh, to one, that means they represent uh, more similarity and they are they are meaning they, their semantic meaning is almost the same. So let's now run the vector similarity for these uh, pairs of phrases that we have. So first we are going to compare embedding one and embedding three, and both of them have something in common. They are talking about fruits. So obviously the value is 0 0.67. That means they have something in common and they are placed slightly closer in the multidimensional graph. Whereas Apple is a fruit and there's a new Apple iPhone, they don't have anything in common. So the uh, dot product value is much lesser. Now by comparing these two, you can safely assume that phase three and phase one are much more closer in their meaning and context than phase one and phase four. Now let's run the similar operation on the remaining uh, pair of embedding. So now we are comparing embedding two and embedding three. So that is Apple iPhone is expensive and there is a new Apple iPhone. Uh, and Apple iPhone is expensive and mango is a fruit. So obviously when you actually look at this, uh, the first one, when we compare phrase two and phrase three, we have 0 0.15 which is obvious because there is nothing that is similar. So the gap between these two vectors in the multidimensional graph, uh, the angle is much wider. So they are not even close. Whereas uh, the embedding two and embedding four representing Apple iPhones are much closer. So this is an indication on uh, uh, how the embedding model basically converts the input text into a vector while preserving the meaning and the semantics of the phrase. And uh, this is very essential because as we go along in this journey, we'll see a technique called retrieval augmented generation where we perform a similarity search to retrieve the context that needs to be sent to the LLM to find an accurate answer. Now that will reduce the hallucinations and this approach is very, very important to implementing RAG or uh, Retrieval Augmented Generation. So stay tuned as we explore uh, vector databases and similarity search in the next video. All right, so in the previous video, we have seen how to convert text to embeddings. 
Now, in order to perform lookup or, or perform semantic search and retrieve embeddings or the metadata associated with the embeddings, we need to store the embeddings in a database. And that's exactly where a vector database comes into the picture. And for this demo, I want to introduce an open source database called Chroma, which is capable of storing the embeddings and also performing a lookup. Essentially, it does what is called as the semantic search, which means if you send a vector, which is already an embedding, and perform a search within the existing embeddings, it can retrieve top K entries that match the text that you have sent on the embedding that you have sent. So it has built-in algorithms to perform the semantic search. And this is an essential building block of LLM applications. So the first step is to convert text into embeddings. And the second step is to store them in a database. The third is to perform a search. So let's take a look at the second step, which is all about turning this into uh, a persistent storage, which is a vector database. Now, the best thing about Chroma is it has a built-in uh, uh, embeddings model that we can use. So already, uh, if you have installed Chroma DB, you can get started with this. Otherwise, you can go ahead and install Chroma DB with a very simple pip command, which is this. So pip install Chroma DB. So make sure this is installed and then you can import the Chroma DB module. So for this demo, I'm going to create a Python list with four sentences. Now, what we're going to do is to associate these phrases with some metadata, some hypothetical metadata, and then store the metadata plus the embeddings in Chroma. So once we created the phrases, let's create another list called IDs. Now, these IDs are the unique identifiers that are associated with each of these entries. Now, as I mentioned, Chroma expects metadata to be associated with the embeddings. So here, I'm creating another list, which is actually a set of dictionaries uh, where uh, uh, dictionary values where we have the source as PDF1, as doc1, PDF2, text1, and so on. Now, in real-world scenario, this could be your uh, document, and uh, this could be a unique identifier. Now, let's create this list. Now, this list has multiple elements, and each of these elements is a dictionary by itself. With all of this in uh, place, let's go ahead and create the Chroma DB client. So, this is how we create the client for the Chroma DB. Now, once we have that, let's go ahead and create what is called as the collection. So, a collection in Chroma is like a database. So, this database is going to contain multiple documents. So, now we have created a collection and it's time for us to populate this collection with the data that we created so far. Now, if you carefully notice, we have the documents as phrases, which is actually the text. And then the metadata is this. Now, this could be citation or the source where we are actually getting this. This is just the reference. And then the IDs, as I mentioned earlier, Chroma expects unique identifier for each of the documents. So we are associating this uh, with the IDs. Now, as soon as we execute this, it's going to download a model. And this model is exactly the same model that we have seen earlier, which is the mini LM L6 V2. Now, Chroma basically has a built-in uh, embeddings model. So we don't need to convert the sentences on the text to embeddings and then store. Instead, we can rely on what's already built into it. But if you want to use any other embedding model, you can do that as well. But for now, for this demo, to keep this simple, we'll use the embedded, inbuilt embeddings model 
uh, which is the mini L mini LM L6 V2. So now, essentially, what happened is Chroma DB has converted each of these sentences into embeddings, and uh, it has stored that along with the metadata and the IDs. So we can execute this method called collection dot peak, and this will give us a pretty long output. Now, what this basically shows us is the IDs associated and then the embeddings. So this is actually a list uh, and this contains multiple vectors and these vectors are representing each of the sentences that we have uh, initialized. So finally, uh, these are the documents and these are the corresponding embeddings and that is associated with the metadata. So let's perform a quick search. So for that, we'll query the collection with some text. So we are going to invoke this function called collection.query and we are sending a text that says Mary got half-baked cake from John. Now, if you actually look at the existing sentences, there is one phrase that actually comes close. John's cookies were only half big, but he still carries them for Mary. Now, let's actually perform a search and see how the output is going to be. Now, to really retrieve the text, we need to uh, print one of the first elements. So let's go ahead and do this. Now, if you actually see, Chroma DB has performed a semantic search and retrieved this as the first result. Okay, so this sentence comes closest to this. Now, if you actually look at what the documents collection has, let's look at that. Now, there are two results coming out of this query. Both of them are related to baking and, and, and cakes. So it has retrieved that. Now, we have put the end results is equal to 2. That means the top k is re restricted to 2. Now, you can increase this to 4. And then, in the order of the relevance, it will retrieve additional documents uh, based on the count that we mentioned here. Now, if you mention just 1, the output will be restricted to the top 1 result. Now, if you also want to find out uh, where exactly the source is, or if you want to refer to the source, you can also perform a query that looks like this. Now, apart from using the query text cookies, we're also using a where condition by restricting the source to PDF1. And we define PDF1 uh, somewhere here. Okay, let's scroll back. Yes. So the first one is associated with source, which is PDF1. So that is the uh, element that we want to retrieve. So let's go ahead and run this and print the results. So now we have restricted the uh, source to PDF1. That's the reason why you're actually seeing a slightly different output. So uh, this demo is basically to introduce you to the concept of a vector database and using that to store the embeddings and also perform what is called as the semantic search. This concept is very, very important for implementing RAND or Retrieval Augmented Generation, which we'll explore further. So in the next video, we'll turn this into a more of a real world scenario and a real world demo where we can now build a, a Q&A system based on the RAND. Welcome back. So this demo is going to connect the dots. We're going to take a real world use case. So there is a data set on Kaggle, which has the Oscar nominations and the award since 1927 to 2023. This is a pretty comprehensive data set where you will find the year um, when the film was released, the ceremony uh, and the category for which the nomination was done, 
the name of the nomination and the fill-ins title and so on. So this is a pretty comprehensive, large data set. Now our goal is to take this and convert this into text because currently this is a very structured data set and uh, we don't have phrases that will tell who got nominated for a specific award and whether they won or not. All of them are in individual columns. So our goal is to concatenate all these columns to form a new column called the text column and then use the Chroma vector database to turn that into a word embeddings entry and store that in Chroma. After that, we can perform a semantic search. So this is a pretty useful demo, which will get us closer to the concept of rank. So let's get started. So the first thing is I created a directory called data. And within that, I uploaded this data set called askers.csv. Now it looks something like this. Now, if you can see, this is exactly the same data set that we have browsed or we have explored on Kaggle. Uh, our goal is to build a large sentence that will concatenate multiple columns into one text column, and then we'll turn that into embeddings. So let's start by importing the libraries. Now, this step will basically use pandas. So uh, again, uh, if you are cloning this repo, make sure you install all the dependencies by SSHing into your instance and running pip install hyphen r requirements.txt. All these dependencies are covered in that. So we'll import pandas, chroma db, sentence transformers, numpy, uh, and all of, all of them are pretty helpful in this uh, demo. So the immediate next step is to load the data set as a pandas data frame. So this pandas data frame has multiple rows and about seven columns. Now this contains uh, everything that got nominated since 1927 till 2022. For this demo, I want to filter this entire data set to reflect only the entries that got nominated in 2022 and the year of ceremony is 2023. So let's do that. So this step will basically reduce the data that we are dealing with to just 126 rows. Now this is manageable. You can certainly use the entire data set, but for speed and for making sure uh, uh, we are limited to the scope, I am filtering this to year 2022 and the ceremony of uh, the awards to 2023. So now, once this is done, we'll also pre-process the data set a little bit. So what we'll do is we'll basically get rid of any row uh, where the film is empty. You'll see NAN. Uh, I want to remove all those rows. And then the category is currently all uppercase. Now I want to turn that into lowercase. So let's go ahead and do that. So now our data set is cleansed. Uh, it is reduced to 121 rows. So a few rows, I think about five of them, which were empty, they got removed. And now everything in the category column is uh, in lowercase. That's exactly what I wanted. All right. Now the next step is very interesting and also the most essential. So what we'll do is we'll create a new column called uh, text. And what it does is it takes every column of the data frame and turns that into a large sentence. So so-and-so got nominated under the category, the category name for the film to win the award. Now, in case the winner is false, we'll use exactly the same technique, but we'll say did not win. So that is how I want to convert all the columns into one large sentence. And uh, this is going to be helpful to generate the context. So this is how our new data set is going to look like. Now, let's print one of this. And uh, before we get there, let's actually go ahead and uh, populate the uh, uh, Chroma database. So now it's time for us to create a collection in Chroma. If you are 
uh, new to Chroma, please watch the previous video where I introduced the Chroma database and uh, populating the collection. So we are creating a collection called Askers 2023. And uh, what we are going to do is basically uh, create a new list called Docs that contains the entries from the text column that we just created here. So now this is the time for us to look at how this is going to look like. So now when we query this docs list, the first element has a specific entry. And if you actually look at the data set, so, you know, we are basically taking each of these columns and then we are uh, just concatenating all of that into one entry. So that's the idea. For example, here you can actually find uh, actor in a leading role, Astin Butler for Elvis, and he did not win because this is false. Now, with a little bit of pre-processing, what we could achieve is this. So now we have a more meaningful large sentence where it says Aston Butler got nominated under the category, the category name for the film Elvis but did not win. So that's exactly what we need to turn into embeddings. So now what we'll do is we'll basically uh, take this and turn that into the uh, Chroma collection. So our Chroma uh, documents in, in, in the collection. But before that, we also need to create uh, IDs that are associated. Now, luckily, we also have a column that is actually the index column. And this has multiple um, numbers that are in a sequence. So what we're going to do is we'll actually borrow that to create the IDs for the uh, Chroma DB collection. So now we have everything that we need. So we have basically the uh, documents which are coming from the concatenated columns as one large sentence. And then the IDs of the data frame, uh, we are now turning that into the IDs. Now, this is going to take a while, just a few seconds. Uh, and now what it actually does is it's going to uh, insert the embeddings into the vector database. So now once that is done, uh, what we essentially have is a collection within the Chroma database. So now with that in place, uh, we can actually look at the collection. So don't run this uh, for obvious reasons. Now this is going to fetch everything, but you can actually see uh, it only re returns a few rows. So now we have the documents and their corresponding embeddings. So this is an indication that you know Chroma has been able to take the sentences and convert them into embeddings and uh, uh, store that along with the ID. Now we are ready to perform a search. So let's go ahead and search for the music awards. So now what we can do is we can query the collection with this phrase called best music. Now let's give the top end results as 10. And let's look at the results. So this is going to print us, uh, give us the entries, the top 10 entries from the uh, music nominations. Now this is pretty cool. So we are able to just get what we want. Uh, for example, if you want to search for a specific uh, singer, let's say Lady Gaga, right? Now you want to find out everything related to Lady Gaga in these awards. Now you can look at the results. So the first result has Lady Gaga in it. Now we also see other results because we put the end results to 10. But if you filter this or if you narrow it down to just one, we'd only see the top one result. Now I know there is an entry for RRR, a movie that won the award. So let's see what happens. Now, when we actually search for RRR, we get just one uh, result. And interestingly, this actually won the award. So now we are very close to 
grabbing the context and passing it on to the LLM. Now, obviously, the LLM may or may not know the actual answer, but if we provide this as the context, the LLM is intelligent enough to comprehend and come back with the response. That's exactly what is called RAND. So now we are one step closer to implementing RAG. So uh, in the next video, I'm going to give you the framework before actually implementing RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation. So stay tuned. So it's time to take a closer look at RAG framework, which I've been referring to in the previous videos. So RAG stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. So in an enterprise environment, large language models may require information to be retrieved from a variety of unstructured and structured sources. This is very similar to the few short prompting that we have seen earlier. For example, if you want the LLM to respond with an accurate answer, you may have to provide some context. Now this context is distributed across a variety of sources. So it is practically not possible for us to copy and paste the source within the prompt and manually add the context. So we need a framework where we can assemble the prompt by injecting the context, the actual query, and putting them in a framework, in a format that the LLM can understand. This is exactly where RAG becomes a blueprint to build domain-specific production-grade LLM applications. So let's understand this a little bit better. So basically the RAG framework is all about augmenting the prompt by pulling the data to enable LLM respond accurately. Now this data can come from a variety of locations including document repositories, databases, and even by invoking APIs. So the framework basically starts with the user interacting with the chatbot. So that is the prompt. The user provides the prompt for the first time in the interaction. Now the prompt may contain a brief description of what the user actually expects in the output. For example, in our Oscars sample, I can ask the chatbot who won the best music award. Now, the second step is to perform the contextual search. And this is exactly where we query the vector database, and in our case, that is going to be Chroma. So Chroma already contains the word embeddings and the metadata. So when you actually pass this query, who won the best music award, now the vector database uh, or Chroma, in our case, will perform uh, a, a similarity search and will respond with the top X number of answers, depending on the top K parameter that we provide. Now, we take the output coming from the vector database query and augment the context. This is where the prompt augmentation comes in. So we generate the context by injecting the output coming from the vector database, and this enhances the prompt, which is also called as augmentation. And then we send the prompt plus the context that is injected via augmentation to the large language model. And the large language model basically uh, responds through the inference call and the chatbot ultimately goes back with the uh, UX or the user interface where the user can see the output. So this is actually called as the RAG framework. Now, we have built up all the steps are all the scenarios that are leading up to RAG. We have seen what are word embeddings, we have seen what is a vector database, and then we have also seen what is a semantic search. Now we are going to put all of this together to build an end-to-end Q&A application where we can literally ask the LAMA2 7 billion parameter model anything about Oscars 2023 because we we provide just enough context for the LLM to respond. So stay tuned for the next video where we actually build this Q&A application. All right, we are at the final demo where I'm going to connect all the dots and bring together the vector database 
the context generation, the prompt augmentation, and finally, the response. So let's get started. It all starts with importing the right modules, uh, not very different. Now, we are basically importing the Chroma DB, the sentence transformers, and the hugging face inference client. Then we are going to define some helper functions. The first function is obviously about the text embedding. So it accepts text and converts that into an embedding. Uh, we are already familiar with this. The next function is a helper function that basically assists us in generating the context. So it takes a query, performs a lookup, a semantic search within Chroma, concatenates all the results and returns a large string. So that is the job of this helper function. And finally, because we are dealing with Llama 2, we got to make sure we follow the prompt template. So the next helper function is chat completion that accepts the system prompt, the user prompt, and then it formats everything in the given template and invokes the hugging face text generation inference endpoint. Perfect. So with all of this in place, uh, and, and to make this complete, I want to start from the beginning. So we are loading the data set, the Kaggle Oscars data set. Uh, we have processed it. So just to make sure we have the text column and then we are going to initialize Chroma. And uh, this is going to basically ingest the text data into Chroma and in that process, it also converts that into embeddings. So you should take a look at uh, the previous demo where I have explained how all of this works. So now the data is inserted or ingested into Chroma. So now we are switching gears and moving to Llama. So the first step is to initialize the hugging face TGI client, which is pointing to the Vulture GPU stack public IP address. And then I'm going to create a query. And this query will be used to generate the context. So when we print the context, you'll actually notice that this has a pretty large stream. So the, the query that we sent to Chroma is what did K who Quan work on? So it basically came back with the top 15 results. The top one has the perfect match. And now our job is to take this context and construct the entire prompt. So first let's define the system prompt. So the system prompt will tell uh, the role of the AI bot. So we are saying you are a helpful AI assistant that can answer questions related to Oscar 2023. Answer based on the context provided. If you cannot find the correct answer, say, I don't know. Be concise and just include the response. So that is the role that we want the AI bot to play. So that is the uh, system prompt. Let's go ahead and define the user prompt. So the user prompt is pretty interesting. This is where we basically define the context and the query. So the context is coming here from Chroma and this is the uh, query and you can easily find the answer for this query within the context. So that's the user prompt. Now, before we go ahead and invoke, let's just take a look at the user prompt, how it actually looks like. Now, the user prompt has this content. Based on the context, here is the context, answer the below query. So now, we are passing just enough context for the LLM to respond accurately. Now, we are coming to the end the final moment of truth. So what we'll actually do is invoke Llama 2 and see how it responds. So there we go. So Kehu Kwan worked on the film Everything Everywhere All at Once as an actor in supporting role, which got him a nomination. That's perfect. That's exactly what we provided in the context and Llama 2 didn't disappoint us. 
So let's change the query. Now I'm going to comment this and I'm going to ask Lama to my favorite question, who is the music director of RRR? So let's first generate the context. Here is the context. Okay. And then let's set the system prompt, the user prompt, let's print the user prompt. It got everything it needs to answer. Then let's invoke. There we go. M.M. Kirwani is the music director of RRR. Perfect. So let's check one more query. So this time it's about Lady Gaga. Did she win an award at all? So we will generate the context, generate the user prompt, send it. Okay, perfect. So now Lama 2 comes back and says, no, Lady Gaga did not win an award at Oscars 2023. This is just perfect. And you know why this is so precise? That's because we actually mentioned that in the system prompt. So as you can see, the key takeaway from this entire scenario is the importance of prompt engineering. Now you, call, you got to construct the prompt the right way, set the system prompt, define the user prompt and don't ignore the format. This is very, very important. This is the template. And then when you bring all of that together and when you connect the dots, Lama 2 will be pretty accurate in its responses. This whole thing is called RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation. So this concludes an important section in our journey of building modern applications powered by LLMs. I hope you found this useful. Stay tuned for the next video where we'll get started with LangChain.